And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars, and welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. There is power in prophecy. In fact, I want to tell you today about the greatness of Bible prophecy. The greatness of Bible prophecy. There's nothing greater than Bible prophecy. The Bible talks about it being a sure, a sure, S-U-R-E, word of prophecy. And there's certain things that are determined. <laughs> God has already decided them. You can't change them. You can't pray them away. You can't, you can't get an army and, 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 and win some victory to conquer the, the times, the destiny, the hour at which something will occur. And some things God has ordained, foreordained to the very day. And, and you can't change that day. Oh, you say, well, I can... I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that, and I'll pray, and, and I'll get other saints to pray, and we'll, we'll, we'll get out our Bibles. Well, that's, that's great, and God wants you to do that. But listen, there's some things that are determined, predetermined. <laughs> I always wondered about a lot of people who would ask me, that they would come up to me and say, well, text, the, the days of Armageddon, the, days when our, the day when our Lord is going to come again, and when the whole earth, this whole planet is going to be burnt to a crisp, like Peter says. And Isaiah says the mountains will shake, and all, all of these horrible things are going to occur. But if we work hard enough, we can prevent that, can't we? <laughs> there are things that God said, are, are they're there, it's, it's going to happen. You can't change it. You should not seek to change it. You should fall in line with it. Now, it doesn't mean we love it. It doesn't mean we're happy about it. But once you know it's going to occur, and once you see your place in it, and once you know you're saved out of it, ah, therein lies the difference, friends. You're not to pray it won't happen. You're to pray that perhaps you'll be spared of it, your loved ones will not have to face it. But whatever happens, God is with you. And Jesus said, have no fear. Fear not. So there, there's your answer. There's your key. Don't try to seek to change prophecy. Get in step with it. Find out what it's all about. Discover where prophecy is taking us. Now, I want to tell you about a prophecy that is absolutely phenomenal. It, it is absolutely, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's so amazing that I have read this over and over and over again. And I keep, <laughs> I am boggled in the mind. It's in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24. And this prophecy is, it's the most misunderstood, misinterpreted prophecy in the Bible. It has caused millions, millions to be deceived, to be misled, to go off on some tangent, to even deny the Lord Jesus, deny the kingdom of God, to put themselves in great jeopardy, they're on shaky ground here. And I'm telling you, that, that ground will, will cave in right under your feet and take you away with it. It's like an earthquake that's about to consume you, dear friends. If you, if you misunderstand this philosophy, you've lost a whole kingdom. You can't just read this prophecy. You can't just read this section in, in, in Daniel and say, okay, well, I don't believe that. <laughs> It doesn't give you that option. <laughs> it, it doesn't. <laughs> God has determined these things. 
You can't say, I don't want that to be true. You can't say, I don't believe that about Israel. I don't believe that about divine uh, election of the saints. I don't believe any of that stuff. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter, folks. I'm trying to tell you something. This is the most astonishing prophecy. And yet the modern day church has fallen away from the truth. Second Thessalonians 2, they've fallen away from the church, from the truth. They don't believe it. They believe a lie. They would prefer to believe a lie. I hear it every day. I see books on it. I go in Christian bookstores. Almost every other book seems to be about this verse of Scripture. And it's so simple to just read it and understand it and accept it. But they try to explain it away, and well, it must be this, must be. Let me tell it to you another way, and 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 pretty soon it's all warped and twisted, and <laughs> it's sort of like the D, the strands of DNA. You know, they go round and round, and they'll confuse you. Now, now listen to this. <laughs> Verse 24, Daniel 9, 24 says, <laughs> let, let me f first build it up by saying, explain something to you. Daniel prayed and wanted to know what was going to happen to his people. He knew he was in Babylon. He knew they were in Babylon. He knew that the prophet Jeremiah had prophesied they would be taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar by Babylon and would be captive abducted, kept as the captives of the kingdom of Babylon for 70 years. He didn't, he didn't doubt that. He knew that was, but what he wanted to know was what was going to happen after that 70 years. What is the long-term destiny? Yes, destiny that, that can't be changed of his people. So, so he asked God, well, what is the destiny of my people? What's going to happen to them? He, he has seen all of history. He knows about the sins, the, the horrible crimes, the horrible things that the people had done, and they had, they had basically went a-whoring after the gods of Egypt and all those terrible things, and they, they, they had built horrible monuments to Baal, to Satan even. Sacrificed their own children in the fires. And there they were as captives. If you talk to the, the common man, the Babylonian, and say, I'm, I'm a Jew, or I'm, I'm an Israelite, will I, will I ever be free? They would laugh at you. You're our prisoner. You're our captive. What thinks you're going to be? What makes you think you're going to be free? <laughs> well, Daniel knew that he was going to be free. Why? Because God had told Jeremiah, 70 years. And we know from the Bible that God kept that promise. Read about Ezra. Read about Nehemiah. Read about re rebuilding the, 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 the walls and going back. And, and <laughs> So it was done. It was, it was built again. And God allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem. Not all did. Not all returned, but God made the way. He made the way plain. <laughs> this is what will happen to you if you listen to God. You may say, I've got a wall up. I can't get past it. I've got obstacles in front of me. I've got hurdles. They're, they're, listen, friends, they're nothing. They're nothing. Those, those will fall away. They'll dissolve. Before the destiny that God has chosen for your life. Yes, you have a destiny. You have a plan. And that plan was set up before you were ever born. You're foreordained to do good. If you're a Christian, did you hear what I said? Before you were ever born, God intended you would have a plan, a mission in life. A lot of people make mistakes because they, they don't want to accept the mission. They think they can go out and do things on your own. You're mistaken. You have a mission. You have a destiny. <laughs> you have a purpose. Now, listen, 
listen to what God told Daniel. He said, <laughs> this is so amazing. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. To do six things now. Let me explain these. The all, all six of these things are listed in the Bible. And, and that they only have 70 weeks to do all these things. 70 weeks. Now, you know, the time is different with God. When he says 70 weeks, it's, you know, everyone agrees to this, even the people that are off on some tangent and wrong here, that this is 70 weeks. And one week is seven years. That's a day is, you know, a year and seven days or seven years and 70 weeks then is 490 years, 490 years. So Israel, which was under the captivity of the king of Babylon, only has 490 years to exist. I'll prove that to you in just a minute. I'm going to prove it to you. That's very important, is it not? Israel has 70 weeks. How about if you prayed, Lord Jesus, tell me what will be the destiny of the United States of America? And God says to you, I'm going to reveal this to you, my faithful servant. And he says, 70 weeks are determined. <laughs> you, you know exactly when things are going to end for your nation, the United States of America. It's got 490 years. They're determined. They can't be changed. Israel has 490 years, and they're in the midst, uh, under the grip of the Babylonians at that time. They're not even, they don't have any years. They don't have anything, according to popular conception. But God knew they would return. He said from the day, it says there, from the day the word goes out to return. <laughs> That's a prophecy right there, was it not? From the day that the word goes out to return, you have four, 490 years to do six things. Listen to these things. Number one, finish the transgression. Finish the transgression. Why are you made captive? You fell into sin. You have sinned against me, your God. Over and over and over. And it's a transgression. And you're going to finish it. And you're going to do everything. Everything is going to happen to you, as I say. You're going to finish it. Now, what did Jesus say when he was on the cross? It is finished. 490 years. It is finished. He didn't say next year. He didn't say 20 years from now. He didn't say last year it was finished. He said, it is finished. What was he talking about? The transgression. That's an accumulation of sin, of unrighteousness. The Bible says he was counted with the transgressors. Jesus became. He, he never sinned. He never transgressed. But he's, he made his lot with them. He died on the cross voluntarily. Nobody took his life. Don't think that somebody grabbed a hold of him. Don't think that Roman soldiers made him go. Don't think that Herod or Pilate had anything to do with it at all. No. I go to the cross. He finished the transgression. 490 years. And you count it up from the day the word went forth. You're going to get 490 years there, my friend. Number two, to make an end of sins. There it is. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. To what? To make an end of sins. They couldn't do it themselves. No one can make an end of sin. You, you have the flesh, my friends. You, you, you can't do it. You can't say, I'm going to lead a, a sinless life. I'm going to be perfect. 
I'm going to follow the law. Exactly. From the time I'm a, a little child, I'm going to follow the law. I'm going to be, there There will be an end of sins. You're a liar. You can't do it. No one's ever done it. But Jesus did it. He finished the transgressions. He announced it is finished. He made an end of sins. Only he could do it. <laughs> Isn't that true, dear Christian? Only he could make an end of sins. Third, he made rec reconciliation for iniquity. Iniquity. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to make reconciliation for iniquity. Who made reconciliation? Jesus did. He reconciled the world to God. The, the world was split from God. The world could not be placed with God. The law couldn't be on equal with God. It couldn't make men obey and, and be righteous. But Jesus could. He made reconciliation for iniquity, for sin, for unrighteousness. Make reconciliation. And the Bible says he did. I'll show you a little later on. All these things. Number four, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to bring in everlasting righteousness. Did Moses bring in everlasting righteousness? No. The people continued right on sinning. Did any of the prophets? No. They were killed by the Jews. They spoke the truth too much. They were all killed by their own people. And Jesus made note of that in Matthew 24. Which of the prophets have you not killed, he said to the Jews? Moses, none of the prophets. <laughs> Look in the Bible. None of them brought in everlasting righteousness. It was never done. Man cannot do it. It takes God. Who did bring in everlasting righteousness? Jesus Christ. Do you agree, friends? <laughs> that, that, that this is the, each one of these things are missions of Jesus Christ. He had a destiny too, and he fulfilled each one of these things, did he not? Bring in everlasting righteousness. He did that. He brought in his kingdom and a new covenant, a new covenant. Better than the old covenant, the Bible says. Better than the old covenant, which never saved anyone. They never could complete it. They never could finish it. He brought in a new covenant, and he himself became the covenant. He himself was the end of sins. He himself finished the transcription. He himself brought in everlasting righteousness. The law couldn't bring in everlasting righteousness. Everlasting righteousness? Everlasting? No. You follow the law, and then the next day you sin again. Or might, maybe you could make it a few months. I don't know. Maybe a, a couple years. I, I I suppose some holy people did, sanctimonious, <laughs> pious people. But it didn't take too long for them to start sinning again. Everlasting righteousness. When did that come upon this earth? Is there any time in Israeli history, in, in the history all the way go back to Abraham? Did Abraham bring in everlasting righteousness? No, but wait. He did believe. And that was counted to him. For righteousness. He believed. <laughs> it was counted to him. He, 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 he was given credit for that. Jesus brings in everlasting righteousness. Believe in him. Have faith in him. Abrahamic faith. You'll have everlasting righteousness. You can't do it yourself. you got to have Jesus. Now, number five. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to seal up the vision and the prophecy. Hmm. All these things will be sealed up. The visions that are talked about here. The prophecy. They're sealed up. You, when you seal something, nobody can break that seal. And guess what? The people of Israel, they didn't believe it. They didn't believe these visions, these prophecies were sealed up from them. They couldn't tear open the seal and see what Jesus was. They accused him of being of the devil. 
They, 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 there's horrible things that they've said about him over the centuries. Even back then, read, they gave him a trial. They said, you're a blasphemer. You're a liar. You're a son of the devil. Read about their Talmud. It, I mean, they have horrible things they say. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to seal up the visions and the prophecy. But every one of these things took place anyway. They didn't believe them. These were sealed from them. They couldn't open it up. These were like top secret classified. You couldn't open that up. Now six, number six. Listen to this one. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to anoint the most holy. Ah, yes. Let's, let's anoint the most holy. God said, I'm going to anoint the most holy. Who was that? Read in your, all the Bible. The most holy was anointed. He went to the cross. He died on the cross. He was counted with the transgressors. He made an end of sin. He made reconciliation for iniquity. He brought in everlasting righteousness. He was anointed by God. When he was baptized, he was anointed. From the time he was a babe, he was anointed. On the cross, he was anointed. Who? The Most High. Was that Moses? Was that Abraham? Isaac? Jacob? One of the minor prophets, one of the major prophets. Who was the, the most holy? Jesus. Verse 25 of Daniel says, From the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be 70 weeks. From the time the commandment to go forth, restore, and to, to build up Jerusalem again until the Messiah, unto the Messiah, shall be 70 weeks unto Jesus. <laughs> 490 years till Jesus comes. It says, comma, and three score and two weeks, 62 weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Verse 26 says, after 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. The Messiah is cut off, but not for himself. He didn't die because he wanted to die. He didn't die because he should have died. He didn't die for anything he did. He died for you. He was cut off. It says there, then the people of the prince shall come and destroy Titus in 70 A.D. Came and destroyed Jerusalem. Took captive the people. Now, let's, let's put this aside just a moment. Do you realize what I have read to you? Do you realize that I've read to you that in 70 weeks, 490 years, Jesus Christ will come and accomplish all of these things and be anointed by the, uh, as the most holy and become one with God in heaven, sit at the right hand of, of God. Seventy weeks unto the coming of Messiah. Now you would think that the Jews would believe this. You would, you would think that a Christian would believe this. But I want to I want to warn you. I want to warn you right now, friends. If you don't believe this, you're in trouble as hell. You're you're in great jeopardy. You're in danger. This is a sure word of prophecy. I didn't make this up. No one could make this up. It was accomplished. And read the history books. You'll find out what happened in those 490 years. And Jesus came even before he was the Messiah. He came. Now, he was cut off. Not for himself, but for us. 
Then the people of the prince, that's an earthly prince, came to destroy. Now, that would mean then, my friends, that Israel was finished. When Messiah came, Israel was finished. Because Jesus brought in a new covenant. And that covenant said that all may come. Whosoever may come. It said in Galatians 3, verse 26 through 29, And if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Gentile and Jew. You didn't need a holy nation of Israel anymore, not made of flesh, because flesh cannot enter the kingdom of God. No, you needed one. People had a, a, a new circumcised heart. They had a new heart. They become a new person. They were born again in spirit and in truth. And God didn't look at what race they were, what creed, what ethnicity. He simply looked at their heart. Read Matthew 21, verse 33. Here, another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and they cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? This is the question that Jesus posed. What will be done to these people who kill the son, who grabbed hold of his uh, inheritance? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard, the rent his vineyard, in other words, unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their season. They'll kill them. They'll slay them. They'll miserably destroy these wicked men. And they'll rent out the, the vineyard to other good people who will render to the Lord the fruits in their seasons. Then Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. The chief priests and the Pharisees, they knew, they perceived he spoke of them. They were kicked out of the vineyard. They had grabbed for the, the inheritance. They had killed the son if they were going to. This is Jesus explaining what happens to Israel. You're cast out of the kingdom. It's given to another nation. What nation? The Christian nation that will bear the fruit thereof. This happened about 70 weeks after Daniel was explained the destiny of the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. I'll be right back after this brief message. Stay with me, won't you? Hello again, friends. This is Tex Mars. You know, we have recently republished a book that has been out of print for years and years. In fact, it's been banned and censored for almost 500 years. 
And I got it out and I read it and I thought, my goodness, this is a classic. This is a book by one of the most famous authors in the world, a man who is a, a great reformer of the church, one of the pioneers of our faith, my friends, Martin Luther. Now, Martin Luther is known for writing many books. He was the, in his time, he was the most famous author in the entire world. He even wrote hymn books. <laughs> a mighty fortress is our God. We've sang that many times in church. There's even a Lutheran version of the Bible, and it it's, it fits to a T, the King James Version. And it's an amazing thing. He lived about 1543. I believe he was born just about the time of Christopher Columbus. And I thought this would be very stilted, the English in it and so forth, but I'll tell you, it's like reading a modern book, and this is a very, he writes for the masses. He was a, 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 a priest, a monk, a Bible scholar, Dr. Martin Luther. He's got entire denominations, you know, the Lutheran Church named after him today. And I, I recall that even uh, uh, Martin Luther was real name, I think is what's King. Or Michael King, I can't remember exactly, but Martin Luther, the one we have a Martin Luther's Day every year, was named after him, or named himself after Martin Luther. He fought and won against the Catholic Church. The Pope said, I'm going to excommunicate you. In fact, he went out to kill him. They were, they were searching for him. <laughs> but you know, some rulers of the people believed him some German princes and others, and they hid Martin Luther. He should have died very quickly. In fact, the emperor of, of, of the European nation, the Holy Roman Emperor, had a trial, tried him there. And guess what Luther said? I must obey God and not man. And he said, here I stand. Here I stand. How many people do you know that, that have said that? How about today in politics? Religion, in any field. And he wrote a book three years before he died. In fact, he wrote two books, but this one is the most famous. This is a book I couldn't find at any bookstore. This It didn't exist, so we took the book out, reprinted it again. We have a beautiful cover on it, and we're offering it to you. Think of this, Martin Luther's famous book. It's entitled, now get ready, it's entitled, on the Jews and their lies. He wrote all about the Jews, what their teachings were. And believe me, he writes about the 70 weeks of Daniel in this book. What I'm telling you about today, the 70 weeks of Daniel. He said the Jews don't believe that. They made up all kind of fiction, fables, lies about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Why? Because it points to Jesus coming, he says. It points to the Messiah. And everything it says the Messiah did, Jesus did everything. And he did it exactly 490 years. Everything was accomplished here. This has to refer to Jesus. Is there any other Messiah that came in 70 weeks? Only Jesus. It was Jesus. In fact, it says... <laughs> From the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, or build Jerusalem, until the, until the Messiah shall be 70 weeks. It says that's, that's when the Messiah is going to come in 70 weeks. The Jews said, oh, that must be referring to someone else or some other thing. I, I mean, it just can't be that it refers to Jesus. We're not going to accept that. You know what Martin Luther said? He says, you, you're not going to get true Christians to believe. You Jews, you're not going to get us to, to deny Daniel 24. But guess what? Millions of Christians calling themselves Zionist and dispensationalists today deny Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. They, they say that never happened. That these things about finishing the transgression, making an end of sins, making reconciliation for iniquity, bringing in everlasting Righteousness, anointing of the most holy, none of these things occurred. They've never occurred. I've had thousands of Christians write me, not directly, but they're quoting others, 
in all the best-selling books and all the big shots from Hal Lindsey to John Wolver to whoever in prophecy all say, this has never happened. It didn't happen in 70 weeks. So God lied. He gave this prophecy to Daniel and it never occurred. Even Martin Luther didn't foresee that, that the whole Christian church practically would abandon Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. He said, this is true. I believe in verse 9, 24. And it proves that Jesus is your Messiah. But over the last, what, 500 years, the Jews have now convinced the Christian church. You can't believe Daniel chapter 9. That, that doesn't say what it says. you think it says. No, no, it means something else. Let me tell you the real meaning of it. And they twist it. They pervert it. And Christian Zionists believe them, and now they don't believe 924. The, the, one of the things that Martin Luther preached about, the power of Bible prophecy, the church today says, no, that's not true. Think about it. Now I want you to have this book. I want you to have this book, On the Jews and Their Lies. It's just $20. And I'll tell you, we're going to print as many copies as are necessary. $20 and $5 shipping and handling. $25. Get this book. Maybe, maybe the first one in hundreds of years. Did you know that his very last sermon, Martin Luther warned about the Jews? The Jews were people that he had befriended. When he was a young man, he wrote a book. And he said, if we, are, as Christians, are kind to the Jews, maybe we can win some over to Christ. He found out, though, he finally discovered the true views of the Jews. He was aghast. He was mortified to know that they hate Christians. They hate Jesus. They despise us. Every, every Sabbath, they have a curse. They spit upon Christians and upon Jesus. Their Talmud, their holy book, says that Jesus is a blasphemer. His mother is a whore and worse things. And Martin Luther says, we cannot tolerate that as Christians. We cannot sit by while they say such horrible things. Through usury, they use us. Usury, financial. They use us. And then they go forth to preach. And, and they lie. They, they cover up what they're teaching. This is an amazing book. On the Jews and their lies. You've got to read this book. It'll, it'll make your heart feel so good. This is a, a Jesus made Martin Luther his ambassador. Hundreds of millions have come to know the true Jesus. Let's just say, my friends, he fought the Pope and he won. He fought the devil and he won. He fought the Jews and he won. Now they've covered up his book. They say Martin Luther is an anti-Semite. We don't want anybody to know about his book, but we took it out. We published it. We're the first ones in, in many, many years. Why? Because I want you to know the truth. I want you to know what Martin Luther said. $25. Please add shipping and handling. That in, covers it all, $25. $20 a book, $5 shipping and handling. And, of course, you can get it through our website, powerofprophecy.com or textmars.com. Powerofprophecy.com. You'll see an ad for it right there on the, the, the front page of our web page, or you can write to us at Power of Prophecy, 1708 Patterson Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. Or you can just phone our toll-free number, 1-800-234-9673, 1-800-234-9673, and say, send me that Martin Luther book. When you have it, put it on your coffee table. And when people come to your house, they'll say, what is that? You'll say, well, that's a book by Martin Luther. They'll say, he wrote about the Jews. Say, yes, he did. What did he say? There's an opportunity for conversation. <laughs> it is a book that defends Jesus. Now, which one of us don't want to defend Jesus? Do you defend Jesus? Do you glorify his name? Or do you just keep quiet, keep shut? If you don't, if you don't 
confess the name of Jesus, he's not going to confess you before the angels in heaven. Here's a way to confess Jesus by getting Martin Luther's book on the Jews and their lies. Get it today. You need it. It's just come out a powerful book. All right. Let's return to our regular program now. We're talking about the 70 weeks of Daniel. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. 70 weeks till Jesus comes. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. He said it is finished. Now, the church today said it's not finished. There's still going to be a millennium when the Jews are going to rule the world. Oh, yeah. The Jews are going to rule the world. There's still got to be a Jewish kingdom coming, they say. I've read the Talmud. It says the same thing. We're going to have a Jewish kingdom. They say there's a, you know, a, a, what I call a fanciful, a, a fable thousand years in which they're going to rule the, the Gentiles and rule the world. And we say, that's right. These Christian dispensationalists, it's not finished. Oh, no. The atonement was not enough. Now, what is the atonement? Jesus Christ dying, atoning for our sins. Yeah, well, that wasn't enough, they say. Jesus wasn't enough. He finished the transgression, not enough. He made an end of sins, not enough. He made reconciliation for iniquity, not enough. He brought in everlasting righteousness, not enough. He anointed, God anointed the most holy when he anointed Jesus, not enough. It's not finished. Someday we're going to have a Jewish kingdom. Someday all the promises made to the Jews are going to come forth. They're going to get the land and everything. They're going to, hmm, really? But what about what Jesus said? The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to another nation, which shall bear the fruits thereof. Didn't he take the kingdom from them? No, no, he did not. The dispensationalists say, he did not. It's not finished. He didn't take the kingdom from them. He, he postponed it for a while, but they're going to get it eventually. My goodness. They're rejecting what Jesus said. They're saying the atonement wasn't enough. That Jesus died on the cross. That wasn't enough. The Jews just sat by after demanding that Pilate crucify our Lord. And they're going to they're gonna get another chance. And they're, they're, they're going to sit around and... And, and, and meanwhile, the church sort of has a little, you know, opportunity here to do a few things. But it's not finished. The atonement was not enough. And the church is never meant to be anything more than a footnote to history. You see, the whole Bible, the, 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 the dispensation, say, is about the Jews and about Israel. Then the church comes for a short while. Then the church is raptured and it comes back to the Jews again. Yeah, God's going to return to the Jews again. He's not finished with the Jews. He never is finished. They're the eternal people. The focus of the whole Bible is on the Jews and upon the earthly kingdom. Oh, my goodness. Is that what all these left behind books in the movie are all about? The Jews? Is this what John Hagee is talking about when he says Jesus did not come as the Messiah for the Jews? Is this when a famous Baptist pastor called me and said, Tex, the Jews have their own covenant. They don't fall under our covenant. They have their own covenant. So Jesus did not make reconciliation for iniquity. He did not bring the new covenant. It did not replace the old covenant. It was not better. He lied. And a man wrote to me last week, says, Tex, I've listened to you for many years. I agree with you on everything. He said one thing about the Apostle Paul. We need to just cut out everything in the Bible about Apostle Paul. Everything in the Bible, cut it out. He's a fake. He wasn't real. I wrote him back and I said, kind sir, in millions of years, you could not get me to take out one word of the Bible. 
in millions of years, you cannot get me to, to eliminate the, the name Paul and everything that he has done and what he said from the Bible. My goodness. This man is a Judaizer. He hates Paul. He hates it that Paul said, here, here on this planet, we have no continuing city. But we look unto the heavenly city. That's not true, he says. We do look to an earthly city of Jerusalem. Paul said, here we have no continuing city. That's not true. The Baptist pastor, the Pentecostal pastor, the Assembly of God minister, that's what they tell me. That's not true. Who are they? Who are these fakes? Who are these liars that tell me the Bible is not true? That 70 weeks were not determined. They were determined. It says so in the Bible. I believe it, don't you, dear friends? Now, if you don't believe it, write to me and tell me why you, you don't believe. Daniel 9, verse 24, 25, 26. Well, let's talk about the kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom is at hand. Peter said the kingdom is at hand. It's here. They came to Jesus and says, John, the, 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 the Baptist, John the Baptist, said he was the forerunner for the Christ to come. He will bring the kingdom. Are you he? Are you the one that will bring in the kingdom? And Jesus said, since the days of John the Baptist, men have been pressed into the kingdom. The kingdom. Did you know that's why he came to bring the kingdom? You can't worship Jesus and not be a member of the kingdom. But the dispensation says the kingdom is of the Jews. The kingdom is going to come in the future. What? You don't believe in the kingdom that Jesus brought? A spiritual kingdom? Let me explain something to you, my friends. Jesus was shown the temple of God. Or I should say it should have been the temple of Herod, the great temple. What a massive facility that was. What an incredible explosion, a collection of incredible buildings. And they showed him, look, look how beautiful this is. Look how wonderful. It took many years. I think it took like 42 years to build this great temple. Oh, they were so proud of their temple. Herod had built for them this great temple. Jesus says, this temple is coming down. And someday not, not one stone will be left on another. And then he said something very, very, very fascinating. He said, destroy this temple. And it'll be built up again in three days. Can you build the temple of, of God? Can you build that great temple in three days? It took 42 years. What are you talking about? My friends, Jesus was talking about himself. He was the temple. He is the very temple of God. Jesus Christ is the temple. You destroy him. You don't, you think you do. You, 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 you think you got away with it. No, you don't get away with it because he rises again. In three days, I will rise. And he did rise from the cross. Now, the, the temple is the people of God. You are the lively stones that are built together. You're framed perfectly. You're the, the great temple of God. And everyone has a purpose. This stone, this stone, this stone. Take out one stone and they all fall. And Jesus is the cornerstone, the headstone. He's it. You must believe in Jesus. He said so. He is the kingdom. He is the temple. The kingdom does not come with observation. That's what you dispensationalists say. Yeah, I'm going to see if the great earthly kingdom, the Jews are going to build a great kingdom. It doesn't come with observation. Not with, there's no outward show. It can't be entered. It can't be seen. Only spiritually. It's not of this world. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. It doesn't have to do with substances like food, drink, well, how can you know the kingdom has come? Because you see the life. You see the changed life of Christians. 
It's not just a little message, oh, yes, about the kingdom, oh, yeah, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, this, the kingdom, that. No, it's a demonstration. It's true political or spiritual, excuse me, spiritual power. That's how you know the kingdom is manifested. When a man's soul is changed, when he becomes a new person, when he throws sin out of his life, when he glorifies Jesus Christ, when he becomes a good man, a good person, somebody you never expected to be a Christian. <laughs> You are translated into the kingdom because you're delivered out of the powers of darkness. That's what you're in today. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're in the powers of darkness. They've got a grip on you, and you can't get out. But once you accept Jesus, you escape. You're free. You're a new person. You're in the kingdom of God, and he can't get in there. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's Jesus Christ. He's the temple. And God doesn't allow just anybody into his temple. You've got to be born again. You've got to be saved. It's not an earthly temple. It's a spiritual. And that's the kingdom. And it can't be moved. <laughs> this is the important thing. It cannot be moved. I told you, it's determined. Prophecy is determined. And the temple cannot be moved. The kingdom cannot be moved. It's everlasting. Everlasting. Did you know God has already fulfilled the promises? But wait, is, isn't Israel going to get the land? Well, well, isn't Israel going to be a great nation again? Isn't God going to restore them? L listen to what Joshua said. Verse 21 or chapter 21, verse 45. There fell not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. You mean he's already, he's already done all those things? Yes, he did all those things. But they still didn't obey. So he brought a new covenant, a better covenant. You may not want the new covenant, friends. You may want them to have the old covenant. You may want them to go to hell. You may want their, 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 their souls to be stained forever. But God has made a path. He has reconciled into one person the two, the Jew and the Gentile. He's made of two, one. Verse 43 says, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. They possessed the land. They dwelt in it. All the promises he gave them. Read about that in Joshua. But listen, later on he says, Therefore say I unto you, this is Matthew chapter 21, verse 43, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Now, I wish I had more time to talk about this. It's, it's just... Uh, Boy, we've had a great falling away. The great falling away of 2 Thessalonians is, is, is predicted to occur in the last days. I believe it's already occurred. I mean, people are now denying the, the, the chapter 9 of Daniel. And, and it says in chapter 9, And he, that's Jesus Christ, shall confirm the covenant with many. He'll confirm the covenant with the new covenant. He confirms the old with the new he didn't throw away the law, but now he's made it better for you. Now it's written in your heart. And know this, the Messiah was cut off. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. They did that. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. When Titus came, desolations were determined. They say that over a million Jews were slain. And the temple was torn down. Just as Jesus had prophesied. Just as Daniel had prophesied. And listen to what it says of Jesus. In the midst of the final week, in the midst of the week, the 70th week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the spreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Read in Matthew 24 where he, where he says that the kingdom of Israel is made desolate. Desolate. 
And here it says, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Remember, as Jesus was being taken to the cross, being whipped and beaten and carrying his own wooden cross, the women uh, of Jerusalem cried out and, and said, we're so sorry for you. He says, don't feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for yourself of what's going to come upon you. And it did. It did. Now listen, friends. Listen. I want to tell you, I've got about two minutes. I want to, I want to explain something to you. I want to take a whole other week on this, but I want you to understand something. The dispensationalists, the Zionists do believe in the 70 weeks of Daniel, but they believe the 70th week has not come, that it was spun off into the future. They say only 69 weeks came. Well, yes, I do believe in the 70 weeks of Daniel, but you see, only 69 came. The last week, the last seven years is the tribulation period. That's going to occur in the last days. That's when the Jews get their kingdom. That's going to come in the future. It's chronological. It's 490 years. It's 70 weeks. He didn't, create, he didn't do all these things in 69 weeks and then say, I'm going to delay the 70th week. Every book I've read by every one of these fakes says the 70th week has not occurred. Only first 69. Can you show me anywhere in the Bible that occurs? When the flood came, how many, how many days and nights was it? Was it 40 days, 40 nights? Well, it was only 39 days, the great flood. Then God put them on land, and then, then uh, I think maybe next year, a uh, thousand years later, he's going to bring in the 40th day. That's insane. You're, you're rejecting the, the, God says 70 weeks are determined. He didn't say, but a week before the 70 weeks, I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to spin it into the future. I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to have a church age. Then we're going to have the, the kingdom age come back again. Huh? I was reading an article that says the prophetic clock stopped. The prophetic clock stopped. It doesn't say that in the Bible, but these dispensations say so because the Jewish people were not ready. Well, the Jews weren't ready, so we stopped the clock. Shut up. You can't stop God's determination. Seventy weeks are determined. You can't stop it. You can't tell me there's going to be a seven-year tribulation, 2,000 years or something, or 3,000 years in the future. You can't have 69 weeks, and then one week later on, we'll do it. Wow. This is the most massive lie I've ever seen. This is a horrible lie. The Jews have been trying for hundreds of years to bring in a lie like this. And you know what? It came about in the middle of the 19th century with Darby and all these people. They said, wait just a minute. All these things didn't happen. But they did happen. They did happen. The Messiah came. He, he caused the sacrifice. Don't you remember? The veil of the temple was torn in two. He, he, he ended the sacrifice. He is the one sacrifice for all time. You can't have the sacrifice anymore. You can't crucify Jesus again. It's already been done. <laughs> it is finished. It is finished. Seventy weeks are over. The physical kingdom of Israel is over, but there is the spiritual kingdom. Are you a member of it? Do you believe in it? Do you believe in the 70 weeks? They're over. They're done with. But Jesus lives. We are of him, and he is of us. He is the temple. We are in his kingdom. We are the lively stones. This is Tex Mars, thanking you for listening to today's program. May God richly bless you and continue to listen to the power of prophecy. Amen.